Kira and today I thought I would talk to you about some of the things I've been loving lately and more specifically some of my favourite things from the last month. I always love watching monthly favourites videos because I just think that they're a really positive sort of content to watch. You can't really get much more positive than someone just talking about things that have been making them happy and what they've been loving lately. So I always think they're this perfect sort of video to watch when you just want a little bit of a positivity boost. And then I also think they are amazing places to find inspiration, whether someone's talking about food, books, films, places to travel, music, you're always going to find ideas for new things to try, which is always really fun as well. So because I love watching them so much, I thought I might as well start sharing them here on this channel and sharing them every month because I also just think it's a really great exercise for positivity to try and bring your attention to what's been making you happy. I think it's really easy for the brain to pick apart things that have been negative and notice the things that are maybe not so brilliant that's going on around us. But I think it's a really great activity to try and make yourself bring your attention to what is positive. So I think the more you focus on like actively focusing on what is making you happy, the more that will become your default and you'll just become a much happier person in general. Or at least that is what I've found has happened when I've sort of focused my attention on what is amazing and what I have been loving. So without further ado, I thought it'd be really fun to start sharing these videos, hopefully sharing some positivity and maybe giving you some some inspiration for new things to try as well. So because I'm wanting to do these videos every single month, I thought I'd pick a list of a few things and then I can just tell you my favourite thing of that category every single month. So every month I'm going to be talking about my favourite book, my favourite TV show or movie, my favourite song, my favourite food and product. Oh, and YouTuber as well because I just love sharing love for other content creators. So without further ado, I've got a few things to talk about. So let's get straight into all of my April favourites. So something you'll probably discover about me throughout these videos is that I'm very very indecisive and the first category I'm going to be talking about is books and I've actually ended up with two favourite books for April because I actually read way more than I normally do this last month and I ended up reading 11 books throughout April and I just could not bring my indecisive brain to narrow it all the way down to one favourite so I've kind of allowed myself to have two because one of the favourites I've got is a fiction book and the other is a non-fiction so because they kind of fit in two very different categories I'm allowing it this month but normally I'm going to try and make myself pick one. So first up with the fiction favourite, the book I loved most in April was The Secret History by Donna Tartt. Now people who I share a reading taste with and have a lot of similar favourites to have really enjoyed this book so I went into it expecting to like it and I absolutely loved it so I'm super glad that I picked it up but I was slightly nervous going in because I've heard of very mixed things about this book. People either seem to love it like I did or they seem to absolutely despise it and I've heard a lot of people not even finishing the book and just giving up because they really can't get along with the writing style. But luckily for me this book was everything I was looking for. This is a dark academia book and it is so dark, mysterious and tension filled and just absolutely incredible. This book was set at a very prestigious New England college and we follow quite a small group of elite students who are being tutored by a very eccentric classics professor who is basically the only teacher they're allowed to have and he gives them a very specific curriculum centred around ancient Greek and all of the classics and they live a very very odd and quite like confined lifestyle where they only really interact with and socialise with the other students who are being tutored by this professor. And in particular we follow our main character Richard who has come to this college from California where he doesn't really have a very privileged background so he comes into this situation not really understanding the universe in which he's about to enter and so we kind of follow along with him and start to learn about all of the mysteries and secrets about this little weird society that's going on along with our main character which is I think a really great way to learn about this mysterious and dark universe because you kind of go in blind and then are sort of exposed to everything along with the protagonist which is I think a really fun way to learn. So at the beginning of this book in the prologue we're told that a murder takes place but aside from that we don't really know anything else about the event and so part of this book is obviously leading up to this event and figuring out exactly how and why it's going to happen and then the other part of the book is all about the aftermath and I think going into this book knowing what's going to happen but not knowing anything else surrounding it, not knowing the context, about exactly how it's going to occur, who's going to be affected and just all of the context leading up to the event and then not knowing all of the dramatic aftermath that's going to happen. It's just such an interesting way to write this book 
and I absolutely loved it because I feel like you are to an extent aware of what's going to happen but you really don't have any idea of the gravity of everything that's going to lead up to it with and I feel like you're just gradually drip fed information that builds up this picture that helps you to understand how you're going to reach the point of the murder and it's just so interesting, so dark, so tension filled and mysterious and I absolutely loved it. It's a very slow paced book and very focused on building up all of the intricacies of these very intriguing characters. So it's definitely not one for someone who's maybe just interested in very fast paced action filled books because this book definitely does not do that but it does build up such an interesting picture of all of the characters and of this very fancy college and everything that's going on in there that's kind of weird and it's just very very interesting. I loved it. And then my non-fiction pick that I absolutely loved was Educated by Tara Westerver which is a memoir that I think was such an incredible story and I just couldn't even get over it whilst I was reading it because at times it really did feel like a fiction because of all of the things that this book details but in actual fact it is obviously based on someone's real life experiences and when you think about that the book becomes even more impactful. This book follows a woman called Tara Westover who was born into a prepper family so her family was extremely religious and were basically preparing for the end of the world. They refused to really interact with the modern world in any way in the sense that they believed that the government was associated with the devil, the children were not registered, they didn't have medical records or go to school and essentially they were all just preparing for the end of the world. Tara was the youngest child in this family and she was basically obviously indoctrinated into this way of thinking and her entire view of the world was dictated by what her parents and older siblings had told her and it wasn't until much later on in her life that she started to maybe consider that there were other ways to see the world and other experiences that she maybe wanted to be exposed to and of course we then follow her along an educational journey which details both an academic and a social and emotional learning experience in which she kind of has to figure out how she wants to see the world and figure out what her worldview is going to be as she tries to sort of negotiate the information that she's been told for her entire life with the new information she gets through her educational experiences and tries to figure out who she is, who she wants to associate with and how she wants to build up her life. It's a very very emotional story, it deals with some really serious trauma and sort of the very difficult and complex issue of trying to figure out who she is having been brought up in such a cult-like scenario. It was really really impactful, absolutely incredible and like I said at times it felt like a fiction because of how wild her experiences were but honestly could not recommend this book highly enough because it was just so amazing. Next up we've got a YouTube channel that I've been loving lately and for me that would have to be Athena Mella. I will of course link her channel down below if you haven't come across it already and I would highly recommend going and checking her out because her content is so beautifully filmed that it's kind of hard to believe that it's a YouTube channel at times. It feels so cinematic and beautiful and I have been loving her channel for quite a few months now but in particular I've been loving it since we've been on lockdown because her content is just so cosy and wholesome and it does feel so high quality that it's just really really lovely to watch. Athena is a very very outdoorsy and adventurous person. She's a hiker, a mountain climber, a rock climber, a boulderer, a surfer and she just basically does every single outdoor pursuit that you could really think of and documents it on her YouTube channel which kind of sounds simple but she puts it together in such a cinematic way that it's impossible not to watch. Athena is based here in the UK in the Peak District actually which is only like about an hour or so away from where I am in Yorkshire which is really lovely but basically her channel is dedicated to exploring all of her everyday adventures. She's obviously a really adventurous person who gets involved in all kinds of outdoor pursuits and she just films all of her adventures so whether that is like her daily walks and rambles and hikes in the Peak District and in the Yorkshire Dales to like mountain climbing in Norway and exploring rock climbing in Spain or taking her converted van down to Cornwall to surf or right up to the Scottish Isles and just exploring all of the world around her which I just think is really lovely. And I think really what makes her channel stand out against some of the other sort of travel and adventure channels I've come across is the way that she really explores finding the beauty in just the everyday experiences. I think when it comes to travel channels the general motto seems to be like the further you can go the better and the wilder experiences can be the more exciting they are and the more views you're going to get obviously but in Athena's channel I think you really explore like what is right there on your doorstep and it encourages you to go out and see what you can find in your local area and you don't have to be right near where she is and able to do the walks that she's doing it just kind of encourages you to go out and explore the world around you and see what you can find and recognize that you don't have to travel a million miles to find something really exciting and you can literally just go for a walk in some hills 
hills near your house and just really explore the beauty of your local area. And having seen her channel, me and Jay actually both came across her channel at the same time. Weirdly, she came up on both of our like YouTube suggested pages and we both started watching her content. And it really motivated us at the beginning of the year to get out more and explore the area around us because we often talk about places we want to travel. But then we realized that there's so many places just here in the UK, right on our doorstep that we haven't even like touched at all and so there's so many places to see and so much to do and you don't have to travel overseas or go somewhere really exotic to have an amazing time and to have an adventure. So at the beginning of the year Jay and I actually started a new YouTube channel called Wilderness Wannabes where we were documenting some of our little like weekend escapades and adventures and unfortunately due to the current situation with lockdown that's kind of on a bit of a hiatus because we haven't been able to go out for any adventures but I'm sure once that sort of is lifted slightly in summer that will be back up and running and it's really down to to Athena's channel that we decided to start recognizing the beauty in the surroundings around us and stop thinking about the times when maybe we could travel to America and do a road trip there or visit Canada or anywhere else further afield and actually just appreciate the beauty that's right here in front of us. Of course since lockdown Athena's channel has kind of changed a little bit and she's not necessarily been doing as many outdoorsy videos because she's not been able to go on all the same adventures that she usually would but obviously if you go and find her channel you can kind of live vicariously through her older videos and then since lockdown her content has been super cozy and wholesome and has just been showing what she's been doing to fill her time at home and I think again the same message applies where she's really focusing on appreciating the beauty of what you have right in front of you right here and now and making the best of your current situation whatever it may be so I love her channel it's so cozy so wholesome like I said I'll link it down below so go check it out because it's just so lovely and I really don't think you'll regret it. Next up I'm going to be talking about my favorite product from this month and this is actually a product I've now been using for a couple of months but because of the nature of what it is I wanted to use it for a couple of months before I actually decided if I really liked it and knew if I wanted to buy it again but I definitely do because I think it's such a high quality product and I also actually ended up buying this product because I kept seeing sponsored videos and people kept being sponsored on YouTube by this brand and eventually I'd seen it so many times that I was just like fine I'm just gonna get it because I really want to know what the hype is all about and if people are actually being serious or whether they're just saying it for the sponsored content but it turns out that they were actually being 100% honest because this brand is really really good and that is native deodorant. Now I really wanted to get this deodorant because it is vegan and cruelty free and all of the sponsored content that I'd seen about this brand said that this was actually a cruelty free and natural deodorant that worked and if there are any other sort of vegan and cruelty free people out there you might be able to agree with me that a lot of natural deodorants are not really all that effective and I heard people saying that this one was really effective so I was really intrigued to give it a try and just see whether that was actually the case because this is a deodorant that is completely natural it doesn't have any aluminium in it which is what most deodorants have to kind of like I think block your pores and stop you from sweating whereas this one still does allow you to sweat naturally but it just deodorizes it as you would expect from a deodorant and I honestly couldn't believe how well this worked me and Jay went on a really long bike ride the first day after I used this deodorant and I was literally like smell my armpit smell my armpit I can't believe how good it smells <laughs> which is literally the weirdest thing I'm probably ever going to say on this channel but it literally smells so good I ended up getting three because they are important from America so I had to pay a shipping fee it was only like a relatively small one but I thought I might as well just buy three at the same time and I got a coconut and vanilla one which kind of smells like marshmallow a blackberry and plum one which I think my favorite one because it's very fruity and then a vanilla and chai one which is kind of like a little bit more of a sweet and spicy one but they all smell so good and they last so long I couldn't believe how well this product worked but yeah I didn't ever imagine I'd be talking about deodorant on this channel but this one was really good I got the 20% off because of the fact that it was from a sponsored post and I just couldn't believe how good it was so if you are someone who is vegan cruelty free or just looking for a natural deodorant I definitely recommend trying out this brand because the quality is really really good it really does last I would wear this for like yoga before work in the morning or when I'm going on like a bike ride or we've gone on like a really long hike or something and it always really works and you smell delicious so I definitely definitely recommend it because it's the first time I've come across a vegan and cruelty free deodorant that is natural and actually really works and lasts for hours and hours and hours and of course if you are vegan then buying something that's cruelty free and natural is probably quite high up your priority list like it was on mine and I just really wanted to talk about this even though it's not really relevant to anything I usually speak about just because I was really blown away by the quality so yeah I definitely recommend especially if you see someone who has a sponsored post by Native and they have a discount code definitely try it because you can get it slightly cheaper as well but definitely definitely would try this one weird thing for me to be talking about but you will smell delicious 
and I think you'll really like it. My next favourite is a TV show that I loved in April, which I have been waiting rather impatiently to come out for quite some time now, and that was the TV adaptation of Sally Rooney's book, Normal People. Now, Normal People was a book that I first read in January and absolutely fell in love with, and since then I'd been waiting and waiting for this adaptation to come out, and it came out at the very, very end of April on the 26th, I believe, and honestly, it was so incredible. I don't think I could have even imagined it being as good as it actually was. I was super excited that it seems like pretty much everyone has watched this TV adaptation, which I'm so excited about because I feel like in the grand scheme of things, although Sally Rooney's book was extremely popular in the general population, I didn't really see many booktube people really talk about it. And it was just one of those strange anomalies where it's a really popular book in the general world, but it just doesn't seem to get that much attention on booktube. And I feel like I was one of a few people who was really, really obsessed with it. So I'm really excited to see a lot more people getting excited for the TV show. And hopefully then those people might end up reading the book as well. But regardless of whether you just watch the TV show or just read the book, or of course, like me, you do both. I think it's an incredible story. And Sally Rooney was very, very involved in the adaptation of making it into a TV show. So I think either way, you really can sort of feel her influence in the story. And it's just really, really great. So Normal People essentially tells the story of Marianne and Connell, two teenagers from a small town in Ireland who start a relationship at the end of high school. But it's a little bit of a strange relationship because they're from very, very different backgrounds, which has a little bit of an odd effect on their relationship. Marianne is from a very rich background and Connell is from a little bit less of a socially affluent background and Connell's mum is the cleaner for Marianne's family and that's kind of how they have this connection outside of school. Whereas when it comes to social status, Marianne is a bit of a loner and doesn't really have any friends whereas Connell is from a popular group and has lots of friends and it's actually due to this status, their social status, that results in them having a little bit of a strange relationship because Connell is happy to interact with Marianne outside of school and actually gets on really well with her better than he does with any of his friends and can kind of really be herself around her, but he's too embarrassed and too worried about risking his own social status to admit that he has any kind of connection with her when they're in the school environment. And so they have this kind of horrible relationship in the sense that he is embarrassed to admit his connection with Marianne. And yet Marianne is kind of happy to have this connection with Connell and she really likes him and so she allows him to treat her that way. And then Marianne and Connell both end up going to Trinity College in Dublin and their relationship kind of continues there and they basically are involved in an on-again, off-again relationship in which they continually sort of magnetise each other back into their lives and we see their relationship go between many phases at points where they don't talk to each other at all, at points when they're best of friends, where they're just hooking up, where they're actually in a relationship and we see their relationship go through so many peaks and troughs but the one thing that's consistent is the fact that they just keep pulling each other back into their lives because they have this sort of indescribable connection where they really feel like they can only be fully themselves when they're with the other person. So it's this incredible like exploration of a really emotional relationship and I think the reason that this book is called Normal People is because of the way that it explores such a complex relationship and doesn't have that typical sort of relationship narrative that you maybe get in a lot of books where people meet, get together and just have a happy ending. This book is a lot more open-ended and a lot more up and down and it just really explores the way that relationships don't necessarily occur in such a linear fashion as many books maybe lead us to believe. And I think the way that the TV show explored this relationship was incredible and I think the way that it got across that sort of normality of the relationship in the TV show was by avoiding using too much music and allowing there to be pauses where you could really hear the breath, hear the silence, and just hear the white noise and the dead air. And I think that really just in and of itself conveyed this normality and a reality to this relationship, which just like doesn't necessarily happen in a lot of TV shows because you have B-roll, you have music going in the background, you have very scripted conversations where there is no gaps, there's no room for thought. And I think in the book and the TV show of Normal People, you have these gaps and pauses and you have this awkward tension and these moments where people don't know what to say or where people say the wrong thing and I just think it conveys reality and the awkwardness and sadness and also happiness of normal relationships in such an accurate way that I just think it was incredible so basically the moral of the story is read normal people watch normal people do something to do with normal people because you will not regret it it's an incredible story and also read Conversations with Friends which is Sally Rooney's other book while we're at it because that is also getting a BBC adaptation which I'm so excited about. Next up I'm going to talk about a song that I've been loving lately and for me that would have to be Follow the Sun by Xavier Rudd. 
This is not a new song by any means. This song has been out for quite a few years and I just think it's absolutely amazing. And even though it's not a new song, it's one that I never get bored of. And I just think it's always such a positive, high vibe song that just makes me feel really, really good. I first came across this song in a yoga class at the beginning of 2019 and it was on my yoga teacher's playlist for quite a few weeks in a row and I just got a little bit obsessed with it, particularly because given the message behind the song, it was at a time when I just recently lost a job and I just found this song to be so motivational and I just felt like it was so relevant to what I was going through at that time and I also think it's a song that has a message that could be really applicable to a lot of people in the current situation in the world and essentially what this song talks about is just that the world will continue to go on. The world has existed for many, many years before we have and will continue to do so for many years after we're gone. And so no matter what's going on in the world or what we're experiencing, everything will continue to go on and things will change. And it basically just taps into the fact that everything is temporary, which is, I think, such an important lesson to learn because even though it doesn't take away from the fact that things might be difficult or things might be amazing at any given time, I think it's just so important and grounding to remember that things are temporary and the world is in a constant constant state of change we are in a constant state of change and the only thing we really have access to is the present moment and I think when you sort of step back from any given experience that you're going through and remember that everything is temporary things existed before and things will exist in the future but everything is constantly changing it just really helps you to put some perspective on what you're going through and I think whether it's that you've lost a job or whether the world is currently going through a pandemic just sort of remembering that fact that everything is temporary everything is changing and nothing will last forever and things will continue to go on it's just a really sort of motivating and grounding and just calming thing to know and just in general whether you're sort of listening to the song for that motivational like knowledge or whether you're just listening to it for the sort of like happy vibes that the music gives I just think it's a lovely song and one that always makes me feel happy so I definitely recommend checking it out I'll link it down below because obviously as much as I would love to play it in this video I can't because it would get copyrighted but I do think it's a lovely song so definitely go and check it out it's so fun and if you are also a yogi I think it's a great one for yoga playlists because it's it's just like so high vibes and just really, really fun. And then the final thing I'm going to be talking about today is one of my favorite topics of all time. And that is, of course, food. Now, kind of like with books, because I love food so much, I couldn't quite narrow it down to just one thing. So I've ended up with one homemade food product and one bought food product. So I'll talk about the homemade product first because I'm so excited about it. And that is this little cookie here. And I've been making cookies pretty much every single week since we've been in lockdown and I've been loving it. And I don't blame myself for this one. I have to blame Pret, the cafe who have been releasing their amazing recipes since we've been on lockdown so that people can still enjoy their products without actually having to go into the cafe. And they first off released their recipe for their vegan cookie, which I made immediately. It's a dark chocolate chocolate and almond cookie and it is so good. They then released just their normal non-vegan chocolate chip cookie which I then made just by veganizing it and taking out the eggs and then I kind of just made this week a hybrid version which was like a single chocolate an almond cookie which was just so good so basically I blame prep for releasing their recipes but I've been really loving experimenting with all of these different types of cookies and of course eating the work as well because obviously cookies are delicious but I've just been loving it I think baking is such a fun way to spend your time in lockdown I always love baking but it's just something that I don't necessarily always have that much time for or I can maybe make something once but then it'll be a few weeks before I get around to doing any baking again whereas I've really been able to like sort of hone into my recipe and make the best cookies that I possibly can because I've been able to make them every single week and I just think it's a really nice sort of meditative thing to do to just get in the kitchen get some baking done and just like chill out and have fun and indulge in the things that you maybe don't always give yourself time for when we're in a normal sort of like work life balance whereas now we've got a little bit more time for ourselves I think it's really fun to get in the kitchen and do some baking and I've been loving cookies because I think especially if you are a vegan baker like me I think cookies are such a like foolproof recipe because you don't necessarily need eggs in them because they don't need to rise so I think it's a lot easier to make vegan cookies and have them go down a treat with everyone whether they're vegan or not than it is with like cakes and muffins and buns because they obviously need to rise and I think you can maybe tell a little bit more the difference between a vegan cake and a non-vegan cake whereas these cookies have been going down so well at home and I'm the only vegan in the house so everyone else has still been loving them and I just think that they are great so I'll link some of Pret's recipes down below and I'll also just like mention the modifications I made to their non-vegan recipe so that I can make it vegan just in case you want to try them out as well but they are so good and then the other foodie product that I really really enjoyed in April was these mini cupcakes by Oggs 
I mean, obviously mini cupcakes are a brilliant idea in general because they're so cute, but I love Oggs as a brand and I've loved everything that they've released. Their products are still relatively new because they only came out for the first time in supermarkets last June. So they're still less than a year old. And I actually did a taste test of their first three products, which was a Victoria sponge cake, a chocolate cake, and a lemon cake when they first came out last June. And I'll link that down below if you wanna hear me talk in depth about how delicious their cakes are, because let's be honest, cake is a really interesting subject matter. But to summarize, I've been really excited to see that their like products keep expanding and they keep adding to the range. They did a mince pies at Christmas time. They also introduced salted caramel cakes, which was so good. And then most recently I've tried these mini cupcakes, which I just think are amazing, especially if you just want a little bit of cake, but you don't want like a full slice or a huge cupcake, or maybe you just want to add it on the side of one of your prep cookies, which I've been doing lately, because again, I'm indecisive and I can't always decide if I want cake or cookies. So maybe have both, have a cookie and then a mini cake. And I also think they're amazing because their packaging is eco-friendly, so it's all recyclable, but because they're sealed in a plasticky type container, it means that the cakes don't go stale. And if like me, you're the only vegan in your house, so you don't want to buy a full size cake or a full thing of cupcakes because you're not going to have chance to eat them all before they go bad. These are amazing because you can have a couple at a time without feeling like you're too full. So you can easily get through the full pack because there's only like nine in a pack. And they're just really, really delicious, but they stay like really fresh in this packaging. And I just think that they're amazing. I just think they taste so good. The cakes are so fluffy. The buttercream is delicious. And I personally don't think that you can tell that they're a vegan cake. Like I said, with my baking, I think when you hand make them, you can definitely tell the difference between a vegan cake and a non-vegan one because vegan cakes tend to be a little bit denser, but these are so fluffy and delicious. And I genuinely think you could put these on a table with a group of non-vegans and they'd have no idea that these were vegan cakes unless you told them. So they're super delicious, super cute. Obviously, if you've got kids, they're great. If you don't have kids, even better because you can eat them all. <laughs> so yeah, highly recommend these and just trying out Oggs in general. As far as I know, they're currently stocked in Sainsbury's and Waitrose and I picked those mini ones up at Sainsbury's. So they are really delicious and I definitely recommend trying them. <laughs> So that brings this April favourites to an end. I hope you've enjoyed hearing about some of the things I've been loving this month. And I'd love to know if you've tried any of the things I've talked about, any of the books, listened to the song, or tried any of the food I've been eating as well, and what you thought of them. And if not, just let me know a couple of things that you loved this April. It's always fun to share what's been making us happy, share some positivity, and also some inspiration for new things so that we can all try new things and see what everyone else has been loving. So thanks for watching and I'll see you next time.